Um, I'm sure you are all aware of Tia's comments regarding his daughter. He went to protect the sanctity of his daughter's virginity uh, by what he what he kind of joked about on the podcast was that no, I think yeah, Tia appeared on the podcast. I think it was of a athlete's wife or something. I don't know which one it was, but eventually the podcast never actually came out, did it? I think they, due to the backlash, the women of that uh, you know that actually were running the podcast decided against kind of releasing it because that's you know it's a good thing. Those podcasts will last forever, and that girl can get bullied forever. So essentially, Tia goes to the podcast. He says, I think they have a conversation about how he parents a teenager. I think something along the lines of that, and somehow. Within that conversation, T.I. divulges the fact that he jokingly or not jokingly makes ensures that his daughter's hymen's intact because he doesn't want her to be defiled by these, you know, young boys running around. Obviously, it's a crazy comment to make. Obviously, something people wouldn't, you know, your average day father out there wouldn't say. It might be a fear you have internally, but you wouldn't go out there commentating on your wife's on your sorry, on your daughter's, you know, private parts or in any way, shape or form. You won't be talking about her having intercourse with strangers, let alone people in your family, which would be weird anyway. So it's a was strange situation. But I guess in some respects you can understand it with the caveat that he's a famous person, right? He has a famous person, he's kind of transitioning into this uh cultural critic of sorts. He's not making music as frequently as he did before, even though his last album was really, really good. I really enjoyed his last album, super stellar work very mature southern rap i really recommend you check it out but you can tell he's transitioning away from that and pivoting into being a cultural commentator and i think with his age and given the fact that musically he probably isn't as hot as he once was and maybe most of his notoriety coming now maybe mostly down the final of what he says on stage and also the stuff he does with his family and the ti and the family document um reality tv show they have you can be forgiven to you could forgive him a little bit for kind of being a little bit um uh, for being bitten by the outrage bug right he's probably so desperate to get some attention on these podcasts to get some level of notoriety because you know if you're ti and you're the quote-unquote king of the south and you're not getting the listens or plays that you want maybe subconsciously it will play some it will play a part in the things that you say you might be a little bit more reckless in the things that you do put out there because you know inevitably you can steer people back to your podcast or back to your social activism work, whatever it may be. So maybe that's part of the reason that it played into you. But still, it was very uncomfortable to listen to. And I think, you know, the internet, you know, um, in a really mature way, I think, kind of called him out on it. I don't think he got ousted too badly. I don't think people were saying that, you know, he was a creep or anything. They just assumed that, you know, He's a father, a young. He's a you know. He's a father of a of a of an attractive quote unquote young girl, um, in the industry now or on the scene now, and he's probably just worried, right? Because he knows how he was when he he was with girls at that age, and he knows you know, essentially it's quite scary to have a girl that looks like that, a daughter that looks like that out in the world, as a young father who's also a bit of a womanizer back in the day. So you can kind of forgive it in some respects, but you know, for the most part, people kind of chastise him. And then in a in a really strange um, turn of events, he decided to go on Red Table Talk and kind of say his piece. The one thing I do rate about Ti in this whole episode is that he didn't double down on it straight after because I think that's usually a thing that people do. People are usually is it loud and wrong, right? When they kind of like say something stupid, they get called out by by the internet, and then they sort of essentially dig in deeper and dig more of a hole. And not try and apologize and essentially say, you know, I said what I said, now what kind of thing. And T.I. didn't do that. I guess because he was probably roundly chastised. I'm sure, pretty sure women in his own family were probably calling him out. So there was no need to really go out there and defend yourself because you knew what you said. You had to kind of maybe explain where that kind of conversation came from, where it kind of came to head. So he decided to go to Red Table Talk, which has now been billed, I think, um, uh, obviously from uh, Jada Pinkett Smith's platform which is, I think, a really good platform to have that conversation because you usually get the three generations of uh, women. You know, you get uh, Willow, you get Jada, and you get her, her mum. So you get perspective from three different women in three different stages of their life. And this occasion, Willow wasn't there, which was, you know, a bit disappointing. I think I would have liked to have her perspective in terms of how it must feel for a, a young girl growing up in, quote-unquote, Hollywood or California, having your father be so, you know, out front and outright about his kind of how he feels about the way you kind of conduct yourself out there in the streets. I don't know how to say it in the right way, but 
I would like to hear what she had to say about it. Like, you know, if there's been some kind of conversation between her, Willow Smith and Will Smith, if there's something there, just her kind of learning from it. Because what we did see, I think from the back of it, was that the daughter did go around and start liking comments that people were kind of putting up on Twitter about, you know, T.I. being a bit of a creep and it being super weird that he'd go out into gynecologist and, you know, ask about um, his daughter's hymen, which he obviously ne- never to be disagrees with. But I think that whole hymen thing was weird because I think at the time, the daughter didn't know it was a bad thing. I don't think she has... She probably thought it was annoying, but she didn't see probably the level of um um I don't know. She probably didn't see the level of intrusion that other people did see, and it's it's a common thing that you get when you grow up in a religious household. Until you go, I remember even with the stuff that I used to go through at home, you don't necessarily know what you're going through at home is weird until you go to your friend's house or you speak to your friends about it, like getting beaten or some shit, right? especially with instruments sometimes you talk to your white friends you're playing football with and they're looking at you like bloody hell mate that's child abuse right and then you and your black friends are busting up laughing about the fact that you all got beaten with a stick with a bat all these nutty things and then the same sort of thing happens when you have friends that are not religious and they find out that you go to church five days a week six days a week sometimes twice a day like what do you know what I mean? they just can't get their their heads wrapped around it right no man could never force them to do anything so sometimes it's probably the worst thing if you're a kid or if you're a parent in that respect and you put your kid in like a public school quote unquote with other people who don't necessarily share your same sort of um family values it can completely get rid of or erode all the work that you've kind of been steadily doing with over the years in a matter of seconds and this red table talk is another illustration of it but this one point really kind of stood out to me this quote a little clip i'm going to play of the red table talk it really kind of made me think i don't know is ti really like, is he just projecting? And I think I'm going to play the clip and you'll kind of hear what I mean, right? So this is the from the Red Table Talk. Like, get up on the screen. I kind of get the feeling that he's probably just projecting as opposed to actually looking out for his daughter. So let me see if I can get the point out here. Which, you know, it's unfair to say maybe because we don't know what he's doing behind closed doors. But I will just judge from a from a, from afar that he's projecting as most so than protecting his actual daughter. T.I. or tip, as I Let's know get him. get it here. Made some highly controversial... Mm-hmm. because... A father Let's like go. myself who mm-hmm. wants to be as involved and as attentive as possible, we could draw the conclusion of we just donate sperm and come pay for things and we don't really have no say-so in how things no, are handled. No, th- that's not true. I, I right. don't think that's... Uh, again, see, he's just... I I kind of... Again, you've got to defend yourself if you're T.I. I think he's kind of prided himself on being this really intelligent, philosophic, philosoph- philosoph- philosophical southern dude, right? does more than hip-hop don't underestimate me i'm smarter than you think but you can't defend yourself this way you can't just say like oh forgive me for giving a crap about my daughter again it's just projection like he was obviously a bit of a womanizer back in the day he obviously put up some numbers he obviously was a favorite of the ladies back in the day and you know he he enjoyed himself he did what you have to do when you're a young guy coming up in hip-hop making millions and millions of dollars whatever no one's judging that but i think he's projecting that idea of how he was a bit of a scumbag with girls onto these other dudes who she might end up not hooking up with anyway just because you know she's a good girl or maybe because she's just not at that stage in her life now and you don't know she might end up crossing paths with a guy that's really nice you know that really that's wants to take care of her and you're again you're denying her that experience i think in general anyway especially i remember growing up in a religious household what happens with this kind of control this rule your parents it's less so as if it's, it's it's less about you wanting to do the thing that they want you not to do and it's more so about them just not allowing you to just have an experience. I'm pretty sure a lot of the guys and girls who grew up in religious households or grew up in houses where you didn't, weren't allowed out, you probably didn't want to go out as much as you made it assumed. You probably argued about it, right? You had fits, you stomped around your room, you threw stuff, you swore at your parents, you had fights and stuff. You probably didn't want to go out that much. But it's just the idea that someone could tell you you can't go out at all that was annoying like i just want to go out by myself i, I, I want to decide if i want to go out or don't want to go out but you don't just decide for me that i just don't want to go out that's insane but inevitably what ends up happening the more you do that you just drive a person to like not ever listening to you and just completely doing the opposite just to kind of wind you up and i know i did when my parents used to stop me going out i would just stay outside for ages i would never i wouldn't come back until like four o'clock or six o'clock in the morning which means you know if i'm staying out that late that means i'm going up to all sorts of nonsense but I'm only doing that because I don't want to go back home because I don't want to face my parents. And also, I just want to what, piss them off. Like, I know that every hour that I'm staying outside is boiling their piss. It's driving them crazy. And I'm hoping that over time, that's going to inevitably lead them to a point where they just let go of me completely, which end up happening, you know? They end up just letting go and be like, you know what? We've had enough. Do what you want to do. 
which you kind of think you've won really but you haven't because you know in that process of time if you're a girl you might end up getting pregnant if you're a boy you might end up you know developing an alcohol or drug problem no one really wins that situation your parents end up you know essentially ruining your relationship with your children and the children end up essentially destroying their own lives before it's even started it's just a horrible situation for everyone involved that's the case at all and i don't think anybody has a problem with you being involved in that I think it was more like, that's so, so very personal. I don't think anybody has a problem with you protecting. That's it. And he's still smiling, but he doesn't get it. Like, that's the whole problem. No one cares if you're involved. I think, you know, there was that famous video of that dad. Um, do you remember that, see that video that went viral a couple of weeks ago of this guy going to pick up a, his girlfriend for, a, for the first couple of dates, I think, whatever it may be. And uh, the dad wasn't at home, but he's got a camera in front of his door and he's talking to the kid through the camera and the microphone he's basically saying hey what's your name where are you from and just giving them you know the dad grilling and at the end he's essentially like make sure you look after my daughter because if you don't i know where you live that sort of thing and it was quite funny it was a bit humorous you know there was some real some realness to it but i think every dad is gonna do that with their daughter right that's your little princess right that's cool i think every guy that would approach a daughter would also understand you know the fact that you'd step to them that hard but this level of control without there even being a threat or an inkling that your daughter is actually interested in anyone i think it'd be a different story if like his daughter came to him and said hey dad i'm ready to get married i'm ready to have a, a kid and stuff maybe this whole freak out would make more sense but it doesn't seem as if he this has been this is in reaction to her daughter kind of going out and sleeping around this is a reaction to just her growing up and becoming a woman a young woman it's like if this is how you're acting now imagine when people actually get interested in your daughter I don't know, you know, let's just like, and I don't know if, if there's one thing you can't tell girls about, especially young girls, is if, I've watched enough movies to know that, you know, you can't, and I'm sure some of the stories are a bit overblown, but if there's one thing that girls will not stand, especially what young girls is being told who and who they can and cannot hook up with. They just won't stand for it. So T.I. is playing a very, very dangerous game here. Your daughter. No, nope. That's not the issue. It's the hymen thing. It's the right. hymen part of you and... Having been a young girl myself, horrible, having yeah. raised several young women and realizing that a woman's journey in regards to her sexuality has to be guided, mm -hmm. right? Mostly, I think, by mothers. That's right. just me personally. Mm -hmm. okay. Agreed. But Agreed. Mother. Look, he's, he's not, he, he's not, he, he's not, he doesn't agree with it. Guided by mothers, he thinks, nope, guided by fathers. Imagine having a conversation with, like, I don't, is there, are there any girls out there? that speak to their dad openly about relationships and stuff maybe if you're single if you if you if you just got a single parent household that makes more sense but are there many girls out there that do that are there even many females who have loads of guy friends who talk to their guy friends about sex standing what that journey is mm -hmm. takes her daughter's hand and walks her through okay right? That's how I worked that out with Will. There's just certain things about raising a man right. that I can't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would tell him. He doesn't believe daughter, it. I'm, I like Tia. He just doesn't buy it. He doesn't buy it. He doesn't buy it at all. Look at his face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because there's certain sensitivities. Okay. That you just don't understand. That you might not understand and have just this because of your relationship in the world I is different. It than a woman's relationship, I right? respect that completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I knew mm. when you talked about it, because I live with a man that loves his daughter. Right. You know, in the conversations I've had to have with him in regards to what is protecting her, mm -hmm. what is educating her, what is actually allowing her to self-actualize as her own individual self versus control. Sure. Right? So when I heard what happened, I said, I know what he's trying to say. Right. Yeah. He's like, I'm present. I'm present in a way that anything that she needs, That's right. any kind of trouble I feel like she might be in, I'm right here. Yeah, exactly. I got her. I got yeah, her. Right. I totally understood that. But <laughs> at the same time, especially when we're dealing with these kind of sensitive issues, knowing the extent of that protection. Exactly. The idea that people thought you were trying to control your this daughter's is the bit that got me. virginity yeah, versus... Yeah, yeah, look at it. Look at no, his answer. That's, that's very different. I it have is. a question. Okay, yeah. ask it. Okay, first of all, the word control is very... 
But you know that's what it sounds like. I know, but in order to guide or direct, you must have a certain level of control of anything. Okay, so... Nah, see, I, lo- I-, I love the... I love the- I love Jada Smith's mum face. That isn't true at all, and that is essentially the issue I have with the entire interview. And that it kind of encapsulates how it must... Gr- how it feels growing up in a religious household, growing up in a very conservative household, growing up in a very African household which I had to go through. Again, I don't blame my parents. I just think it must be so difficult growing up one way in Africa and coming to a country like Europe or coming to a, you know, a continent like Europe or coming specifically to a place like London and having your kids here and having them running around frolicking, you know, doing the things that you could never imagine doing when you were a kid and just having, you know, having these freedoms and these tools to your disposable dis- disposal as a kid that they would never imagine they could have. And sometimes, sometimes it can be really frustrating when your kids don't, you know, take advantage of it. I remember my dad always saying that all the time. You've got, you know, this land, this is the land of milk and honey and you're not taking advantage of it. You know, the streets are paved with gold. Like for my dad, like he essentially thought or assumed we were being lazy by being, we were basically weren't doing enough with our life, right? That the streets, you know, there was like money littered around the streets that we weren't kind of picking up, which he probably has some point to, but you know, it's not that big. It's not really the, the whole crux of it. So anytime he saw us playing the computer game or, you know, watching mindless amounts of TV, he'd just be like, it'd make him furious because he'd be like, you know, the stuff I would be doing if I was your age, right? That's what he's probably picturing himself, like, with the drive that I have, da, da, da. But obviously, we're not coming from the place that he's coming from. We haven't seen the darkness that he's seen. We haven't seen the level of the po- poverty, of depravity, or we haven't gone from, you know, I've, we've got, I've got some family members who are incredibly rich, right, prior to the Civil War and then in Angola when it broke out. And as soon as the Civil War happened, bang, they lost loads of money. So I understand that kind of drive and also understand how they can be a bit of a disconnect with your children. But I also think that there's this idea that somehow controlling your kids is the way to then grow up and to be like, um, you know, um, uh, valuable members of, of society. And I just I don't think in this society you can do that. I think it's, it works in a society where everyone else is doing it. I think the moment, that's what I'm saying, the, what happens, the issue that those kind of parents have is that the moment your kid leaves your household, all bets are off. They only have to see things. If they don't even need to talk to anybody, just seeing things alone is going to make your kid rebel or act out against your wishes. Simple as that. I don't need to speak to anyone. The moment I go to a primary school and I notice that some kid next to me has a sandwich with cheese and mayo in it, I'm going to go back and try and make my one. Even if my mum says, no, you shouldn't be eating that because it's going to make you fat, I'll just do that. The moment I see a kid staying out a bit late playing in the park, I'm going to want to play out late in the park. Just tiny things are going to trigger and are going to kind of essentially keep keep the kid like banging against that door control that you're kind of laying down it's always going to happen and also i think guiding and control are two different things you can't control to guide that isn't con- guiding that is essentially control and i think with young people especially young girls i've dealt with enough of them in my life um especially the more um uh, you know sexually active ones especially when i was younger especially going to uh quote unquote um not quote unquote but like a catholic sixth form and dealing with some girls that were from the Catholic schools, those girls were inevitably, I think most boys will attest to it, that most of those girls were maybe the most um, sexually active girls you'd ever cross paths with, ever. And most of it had to do with issues that they were going through at home. And there's even some boys out there who specifically go after girls who have issues at home like that, parental strife, you know, maybe parents are getting divorced, maybe you have the girl has beef with her mom or her dad, Girls, girls would specifically sometimes scoop in and kind of slide in and kind of comfort those girls because they knew they would just completely act out just to just to kind of you know subconsciously piss off their parents. So what Ti is doing, if he, why he's not realizing it, even though he's trying to go out and control his daughter, he's inevitably leading her out down this path, which obviously you don't wish on anyone. Touch wood. He's leading down her. He's leading her down a path where she's just going to act out sexually just so she can reclaim her own sexual identity as kind of willow smith is kind of um so as jada's pinky smith is kind of expounding upon she end up doing that which is something that you don't want of course right and i just don't know why he can't see that that's the thing that's a bit worrying to me like you are the more you're trying to control her the more you're going to be unable to control her and then when she suddenly starts acting out it's all going to make sense like sadly and again i don't have any super i don't have any I have a lot of sympathy for the guy because I think it must be really difficult to raise a daughter of that age in Hollywood at this present time. I'm pretty sure it is. It's probably not the easiest thing in the world, but I just would wish that some of these celebrity people would kind of keep their opinions to themselves when it comes to their family. I think looking at what Joe Rogan does and how he does, doesn't mention ever his wife and kids on a podcast and stuff, I think it's because you would never to be getting to a position like this 
you would never to begin to position where you are you know spilling family secrets you know saying things in public that don't necessarily go down well with your other family members and i think even a really obscure example but i think this is inevitably what led to the whole um burt kreischer and uh irish affair fallout when irish affair has supposedly or did actually allegedly or he actually did not allegedly when he um spiked burt kreischer's drink that whole thing happened and then now i think burt kreischer these two comedians irish affair and burt kreischer they had a, a big saw like falling out during the end of sober october because uh Irish Shafir went on Burt Crash's podcast, they were having a good time, and then Irish Shafir sort of spiked Burt Crash's drink with a bit of MDMA, right? To make him a bit loose and to get him to enjoy himself, not knowing that the that community he spiked the drink of was having um, um heart medication. They were gonna have a family dinner later on. They were just you know, they're living their life. Imagine spiking someone's drink, your friend who kinda has kids and a family in the next room. It just isn't something that you would do, in it? So they have a big falling out. The wife inevitably says, hey, that comedian can't come out to the house anymore. I don't want to see him. I don't talk to him. You know, he's excommunicated. But if I look back on it, the reason why that happened was because Burt Kreischer's comedy is essentially, it's obviously quite self-deprecating as most comedians are, but he inserts a lot of his family into it, right? His comedy specials, I think, famously told, telling stories about one of his daughters being incredibly dumb or, you know, in his eyes, incredibly stupid. And he consistently kind of brings up his family i think so so much so that one of his specials is called secret time right because he inevitably does this thing where he tells people secrets like the whole crowd hey this is a secret don't tell anyone you know it's quite funny in itself so i think that looseness of being so upfront and putting your kids on social it kind of allows comedians to kind of intrinsically or subconsciously think that you know all bets are off i can talk about your wife your kids and it doesn't matter because you're putting them on social so i wish fear says said something i think maybe a few years ago where I think one of his daughters was kind of having issues with her teeth and he made some comment about her teeth being fucked up. And, you know, imagine the girl was like, I don't know, 13 years old or something and he laid into her like a comedian would. And imagine getting ripped to pieces by an adult comedian that happens to be your dad's friend and you're, 13 year, and you're a 13 year old girl going through whatever you're going through when you're growing up through puberty and stuff. And that kind of built a bit of friction. But that's where it kind of started from. That kind of oversharing from his dad in Burt Crashers and started this whole cascade of you know, of events that inevitably led to, you know, Irish Fear spiking his drinking MDMA. So I just think sometimes you have to be conscious the fact that you're the famous one. T.I. and Tiny, they're the famous ones. Their kids are not right now. And if they do decide to be famous, fair enough, but you have to be conscious about how much of their information you put out there, which is why I've always been quite slightly uncomfortable with the whole Kanye and Kim, you know, parading their kids everywhere because, you know, maybe they don't want their pictures around when they're that age, right? You might want a, a bit of privacy and stuff, which is what I think... um Angela Jolie has done with their kids that they've adopted and Brad Pitt, right? They essentially have kind of kept them out of the limelight. So if you do decide to go into limelight yourself, cool, no problem. But we're going to try. It's, it's, it's probably going to be really, it's, it's really going to be really hard because no matter what private school you go to, if you're Brad Pitt's and Angela Jolie's kids, you're still going to be the most famous kids there. But we're going to try and give you the most normal childhood that you can get. And then if you decide to come into the business, no problem. But this idea that you're going to go out on the podcast and, you know, talk about your your daughter's sexual reproduction sex tech, uh, reproductive organs is just yeah it's a mad one man it's a mad one but yeah big up ti for actually going on red table talking talking about it um i watched the whole thing it was the same it was a bit of this much of what i've kind of spoken about there um i get the feeling that he was sorry that he embarrassed his daughter but not sorry that he's kind of you know this controlling invasive father i think he's going to continue doing that that's just the way he parents it is what it is I think we can take a lesson from it as we want and we sort of just move on in it. Probably other things to concentrate in the world than how some guy parents his daughter, but you know, just sad to see in general. What can you do?